NFL free agency continue today, and we're going to go over all the day two signings and give them grades, starting with the NFC Seattle Seahawks. That's right. We're headed to the West Coast this time, and the Seattle Seahawks have really done nothing today here on day two. They really, this is a team that came into free agency kind of with a fixed cap, not a lot of room to make a lot of splash plays, and they want to prioritize keeping some of their players with obviously Leonard Williams being the biggest priority there they were able to keep him so i'm sure they are happy as a clam they bring back Noah fan i would have preferred kobe parkinson but neither here or there they did uh have to kind of rework or extend tyler uh lockett's contract there to kind of get a little bit more flexibility in the cap but at the end of the day i think i'm gonna stick them in this category i call resign their guys uh you're gonna notice i don't have traditional letter letter grades instead i got a little bit of nuance i mean yeah i do have an f category and an a category but there's a little bit more nuance i think to these tiers and i'll kind of explain to them as we get to them let's keep moving with the san francisco 49ers I haven't this was a team that i think they were two million over the cap kind of led to the the mutual pardon of them and Eric Armstead, that sucks. But with the little cap that they had, I like the addition of Leonard Floyd quite a bit. They get a really good, really solid pass rusher there. Uh, obviously, they weren't in love enough to bring back Chase Young, or maybe the price just wasn't right. He's going to be meeting with the Panthers, uh, I think, today or tomorrow. I really don't like Gutier Gross Matos. I think he's a depth player, depth player at best. And I mean, two years, $18 million. He's going to be a depth player for them, but I really feel like they may have overpaid for that. Uh, outside of re-signing uh, Odom, they haven't really done uh, much of anything else. So I'm just going to put them in this category. I have named Little Cap Good Moves. Basically, teams that are working with fixed budgets, but they were able to do a good move here and maybe there, which they're good move me and Leonard Lloyd. Let's keep rolling with... Los Angeles Rams, they were big winners for me yesterday. I loved the addition of Jonah Jackson. Uh, they were able to retain Kevin Dotson. And honestly, they're probably going to move Steve Avila to center. They brought in Parkinson, who I already said I was a big fan of. But then today, they added Darius Williams. I was so sure, so positive the minute Darius Williams was cut by the Jags. And a lot of that didn't have to do with his play, but because of Ryan Nielsen's scheme there in Jacksonville, uh, being more of a like a press man. Williams, more of this off coverage corner, he just kind of felt like ideally he would go to one of these, like, like either go back to the Rams or maybe even go to the Falcons where Raheem Morris is there because Williams used to play for Raheem Morris, used to play for the Rams. So he's already familiar with the scheme. This is a team that desperately needed a corner, desperately. It was a con like a constant position we would address in mock drafts to get Darius Williams. I think that's a big pickup. I think that's really good by the Rams. I'm going to keep them where I had them yesterday all the way up here in money well spent. That is essentially my A-plus category. Like, hey, I think you've done really, really well in free agency. Now let's wrap up the NFC West with the Arizona Cardinals. A little bit more disappointing here, if I have to say so myself. Uh, they went out and essentially, well, basically they have overpaid depth players. Like outside of Sean Murphy Bunnin, who I really like that signing, they really didn't get a starter. They really didn't. Like they added Justin Jones. They also added uh, Bilal. Uh, and those are fine depth players but they're not starters and you're paying these guys like starters you're paying them 50 million combined i believe uh nickel's contract was uh two years 20 million something like that i really hate that i really really hate that along with mac wilson granted you're only paying him like four million a year but this is a guy that hasn't played 400 over 400 snaps since his rookie season I was really hoping with the amount of cap space the Cardinals had, they would be a little bit more active in free agency, and they just haven't. And where they have spent it, I really haven't liked it. So I'm going to put them in 
this category I call poor use of funds. Essentially, it's my F grade. Like, hey, you kind of, you kind of screwed up. You kind of screwed this up. All right, let's go ahead and move to the NFC South with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I haven't made a move today. Obviously, this is a team trying to that, that was focused on retaining some of their stars. Starting with Mike Evans, followed up by franchise tag in Antonio uh, Antoine Winfield, excuse me, and then getting a deal done with Baker Mayfield. Three years, 100 million could get up to 115 million. So, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna throw them in, re-sign their guys. I'm gonna have them ahead of Seattle because well, the guys that they brought back are a bit more valuable. New Orleans Saints. This is a team every year that, that their, their sole mission, their sole focus is on how are they going to get under the cap this time. They entered the offseason about 80 to 82 million over the cap. So they've just been restructuring left and right. Somehow was able to get under the cap. So, I mean, yeah, we already knew they weren't going to be very active at all in free agency so i'm gonna put him in this category i call jerry jones's yacht basically a category that's gonna be filled with teams that are just watching free agency go by and sitting by doing nothing they're just going to join jerry jones on his yacht so mickey have a good time with jerry jones Keep this sucker moving to the Carolina Panthers, who did just add today a Sean Robinson. I feel like three years, 22 and a half million is a bit of an overpay. And it kind of feels like the Panthers have just overpaid. Late last night, they signed Damian Lewis, four years, 53 million, a little bit more than what he was projected. But the Robert Hunt contract, golly, that's a lot. I get it, it's a five year, 100 million, but still, like, I get it. Your guard position sucked last year, your offensive line sucked last year. So you were probably a little thirsty to get better players there on the interior, but you spent $153 million to do that. So while I can understand it, doesn't mean I have to like it or love it. I'm going to have them uh, in this poor use of funds category ahead of the uh, Cardinals because at least they got multiple starters. <laughs> Okay, okay, we got Arizona, or uh, Atlanta Falcons, excuse me. Get my bird teams confused. Kirk Cousins was the big sign-in yesterday. Obviously, this creates kind of a, maybe a two-year window where you, you want this team to be a Super Bowl contender. And then today's edition was phenomenal. The minute Darnell Mooney hit free agency, I was like thinking teams like the Falcons or the Chiefs would be in on him, and it ends up being the Falcons. I think he's a phenomenal I guess uh, partner in crime compliment for Drake London. So for me, the Falcons continue to be winners. I'm going to have them right here at the top in money. Well spent. I believe they're also potentially in on Siren uh, Neal. But we'll find out. I think they're, he's visiting with them and the Dolphins. All right, before we get to the NFC North, I got to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Aurora. Real quick, let's talk about today's sponsor, Aurora. Y'all already know data brokers are out there selling your information to scammers, spammers, and everyone in between. They're selling your name, your email address, your home address, your health records, and even the information of your loved ones. I was shocked to see how many data brokers had my information. Y'all remember that meme? They're coming for everybody. So hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husband. Well, Aura does just that. They have features such as antivirus, VPN, password management, which was huge for me, parental controls, which I love as a parent, identity theft insurance, and so much more. And they do it all from one app. It's really cheap as well for all that they provide, but you could try it for free for 14 days if you use the link in the description. So check it out. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, but it also supports you, the viewer. Use the link in the description below to get that free 14-day trial. Remember, you got to use the link and it will ask for a referral. You could just put email. I'm not officially a sponsor with them yet, but I can be. It kind of relies on you. So, hey, great way to support the channel and get your data in order as well. Let's go ahead and move to the NFC North with the Minnesota Vikings, who were, were pretty busy last year, or last year, last yesterday. 
after Kirk Cousins decided to move to Atlanta. But today they add Sam Darnold. Is he the answer at quarterback? Probably not. They're probably going to be active in the draft to try to get uh, whether uh, maybe like uh, Jaden Daniels, uh, JJ McCarthy. I don't know. We'll find out as we get closer to the draft. But they get Sam Darnold. At the very least, they kind of get a stopgap there. Uh, on a one-year, $10 million deal. I really actually like the Aaron Jones addition because, well, they weren't very good at running back last year. It was kind of a hot mess, so much so that Alexander Madison was released at the end of the season. So those were two very good additions. Uh, I kind of talked about uh, the uh, Grenard, Van Ginkle, and Cashman sign-ins last night so if you want to hear me talk about in depth about the day one sign-ins you can check out the stream i'll leave it in the i card right here but all in all man i think minnesota like if you were gonna lose cousins they went ahead and addressed some of those needs there one being the edge position grabbing a solid running back because like man jones on a one-year deal i think it's pretty nice when healthy he is very very good so i think they've i think they've done well overall they've made good moves here in free agency and that's where i'm gonna end up putting them i'm gonna put them in this category i just call overall good moves essentially b maybe a b plus all right we got the green bay packers they did re-sign Keyshawn nixon three years 18 million this is a good guy that played a lot of slot for him last year but mainly he's kind of your star returner so that's a good re-signing. The big signings were being obviously like Josh Jacobs, Xavier McKinney. Like overall, I thought that they made good moves. So I'm going to put them in that overall good moves category. Uh, I'm going to put them right behind the Vikings. I think the Vikings, you know, did a little, did a little bit more. I, I know that a hey, Josh Jacobs and Xavier McKinney are kind of like premium with their position. But I think overall, the, the positions that the Vikings addressed were a little bit more vital. A little bit more valuable. Detroit Lions, man. They, they've made moves that they're fine. They're solid moves. They're addressing needs. Like Marcus Davenport is one of my favorite signings. A guy when on the field, when healthy, is really good. So you're going to get him in there with Aiden Hutchinson. The, the Carlton Davis trade, I kind of wish was... Legereus Sneed, but I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe Legereus Sneed doesn't even get moved, but they bring in Carlton Davis, who is like one of two, one of three extremes, really. Either he's really good, really bad, or really hurt. But they got him for relatively cheap. They get two six rounders back, along with Carlton Davis in exchange for a third rounder. Bring back Emmanuel Mosley was solid. They added a Meek uh, Robinson today, who's a very good depth player. So you, But you look at that cornerback room, and it's like, Cam Sutton, Carlton Davis, Samik Robertson, Manuel Mosley, and you're like, eh, it's fine. So, like, I, I really think, man, if they can land LeJarrius Sneed, that would be freaking phenomenal. But overall, I think they have made good moves in free agency, so I'm going to have them um, uh, just ahead of the Packers here. Moving on to the Chicago Bears. And I believe the only move today thus far was adding Gerald Everett, which, I mean, he's got ties with Shane Waldron. Waldron really likes to run 12 personnel. So having Everett and Cole Komet, just, it's just kind of the dream there. But their biggest move was tagging and then being able to re-sign Jalen Johnson and re-signing him. For less money than I expected. Kevin Bayard's a really good pickup there. Keep in mind, prior to last season, he was a top 10 safety. So you're kind of hoping last year was just kind of an outlier. Uh, DeAndre Swift, it was it's kind of a whatever deal for me. Because, I mean, they, they have Khalil Herbert. They have Roshan Johnson. I think they still have Deontay Foreman. So I'm like, I don't love that pickup. But overall, I think they spent their money well. Uh, and, and to be fair, I, I think it's the Jalen Johnson re-signing that kind of carries this grade for me. I'm going to put them right at the back end of money well spent. I do believe they're meeting with DJ Wonham sometime this week. Uh, so they're not done yet, baby. They're not done yet. 
All right, going to the Washington Commanders. And they have made a couple of moves today. Again, if you want to hear me talk about their moves yesterday, you can check out that stream. But they added Cleveland uh, Farrell and Dante Fowler there to the edge room along with Dorrance Armstrong. So it's still not like a sexy edge room, but it's better than what, what it was. That's not saying much. Tyler Biotis was kind of a no dust sign in many expected to happen. Allegretti is fine, but is he, is he even a starter on this team? I guess he might end up starting left guard, but I don't love it. Luvu was fine. You're going to pair him up with Jamin Davis. I feel like that's going to be a very athletic linebacker core. Austin Eckler, really good compliment to Brian Birds. But at the end of the day, man, I feel like they just kind of spent money. They came in with the most cap. I'm still waiting for that big sign-in. I really don't think they made a massive sign-in. Like, I was kind of hoping maybe like a Neil Hunter. That would be kind of nice. I think the Neil Hunter is meeting with the Vikings and the Texans. So be on the look for that. But like, just, I feel like they've added, they've, they've added good players, but it wasn't like anything that would really blow your socks off, you know? So I feel like th this category kind of, kind of, fits best of what they did okay we got the philadelphia eagles and uh i think the only move today i mean yeah they had the extension on Braden man but they did pick up Devonte parker who was just released i believe late yesterday late last night so they bring him in so he's gonna kind of be a wide receiver three or four for that squad uh, I talked in depth about the Saquon Barkley pickup, how I feel about that. I think at the end of the day, overall, they've made good moves, but I don't think it was like necessarily money well spent, especially like with Saquon. I get it. Saquon's a superstar. And quite frankly, this could end up being like a Christian McCaffrey-esque move, similar to what the Niners did. But... I don't know. We'll see it. He's got to stay healthy, but I mean, you could have said the same thing about Christian McCaffrey coming out of Carolina. I don't know, man. It may, maybe it ends up being like stupid, like stupid great. Cause like Sa Saquon is one of the best backs in the league. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not hating on it and whatnot. It's just, you know, not necessarily my cup of tea to go out and spend money like that on a running back. But if it was going to work for any team, it, it, it would be this team right here, the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm going to put them in that overall good moves category. Uh, the New York Giants, they did add Drew Locke today. That might be competition for Daniel Jones. I, I legit don't know. Maybe this is what they count as their quarterback move. And they're not going to go quarterback in the draft. Uh, but uh, a lot of their moves were yesterday. Devin Singletary, Jermaine Illuminor, and uh, John Runyon. Obviously, the big one being the trade for... Brian Burns, which I didn't even mention with Carolina, that because that played a lot into their grade. Because this was a guy that Carolina could have got two first round picks for what a year, year or so ago, and, and instead they have to settle for a second round pick and a fifth round pick. Nasty. Giants made a killing. Now they're anticipating him make that take that next jump, right? That breakout. Because right now he's kind of sitting as like, okay, he's probably a top fifteen edge but he's not an elite one yet or at least the production hasn't been elite the pressure rate hasn't been elite so you're hoping that he takes that next step similar to what like josh allen did this past year with the jags but overall man i think th they have spent their money well they have dress addressed areas that they needed to so i'm, I'm actually i'm gonna put them right up here uh, i think i'm gonna go with the ram i'm gonna have the rams ahead of them I, I, like i said i really love what the rams have done but uh, I think I think the Giants did. I, I really like Illuminor. That's a really good pickup for them. Runyon's kind of like fine. You're just trying to get creep that offensive line back towards average. And honestly, he's a guy that can do that. So good on the Giants, man. Good on the Giants. Dallas Cowboys, you know where we're going here. We're going to Jerry Jones's yacht. This is literally a category dedicated to the Cowboys. We are going to be active players in free agency, and they have done nothing. Nothing. They re-signed a lawn snapper. Whoop-de-freaking-do. 
Okay, Los Angeles Chargers. This is a team who can't really do anything until they decide what they're going to do with the likes of Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Mike Williams, and maybe even Keenan Allen. They just don't have that cap space. They bring in Gus Edwards. Fine, cool. They needed some guys in the running back room. Two years, six and a half million. That's a really good price for him. And then Will Disley is, he's a blocking tight end. It, it's fine. It's fine. Fine. So uh, I'm actually going to put them, uh, I'm going to put them up, up here on Jerry Jones's uh, yacht as, because we're, we're just sitting here like, what are you going to do, Chargers? What are you going to do? Are you going to move on from these guys? They're expensive as hell. You have no cap room. You're going to have to do something with these guys. So it's kind of a wait and see right now with the charges. Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> they took my boy Christian Wilkins. I'm a Dolphins fan if you didn't know. They took Christian Wilkins. That's a really good sign for him. I really feel really good about that defense. I'm hoping they bring back Adam Butler. We'll see. Andre James, that was a solid re-sign-in when I expected. He, he's played very well for them over the course of last few seasons. And the Gardner Minshew one. Seemingly, the Raiders probably feel like they're out of this quarterback class. Not necessarily because they're not high on the quarterback class, but maybe they don't feel like they're going to be in position to get one of the top quarterbacks. And they don't want to take one outside of the first round. So they go out and they get Gardner Minshew, who last year showed, hey, he's... Still one of the best 32 quarterbacks in the NFL. He is a solid starting quarterback in the NFL. So I don't mind the sign-in. Not one bit. I don't mind it. It's not like the sexiest sign-in. But I don't mind Minshew Mania heading to Sin City. Um, they're going to be at the top of this overall good moves category. Uh, like I said, I was a big fan of the Christian Wilkins sign-in. Uh, as a Dolphins fan, it hurts to see him go. It really would have been nice if we were able to keep uh, keep hold of him. I'm going to go ahead and hit the refresh here. Now, the Chiefs, they're a team that has mainly been focused on just trying to hold on to their players. As Chris Jones, obviously, they give him that big extension. LeJarrius Sneed, he gets the franchise tag. So I'm kind of curious if they will move him or when they may move him. Drew Tranquil, they re-signed him. Uh, the move today was Irv Smith. I'm not going to lie to y'all. That's a big nothing move to me. The big nothing move. Uh, so I'm just going to put them in this, like, re-signing their guys tier. I'm going to put them at the top because uh, Chris Jones is kind of that guy. Oh, man, the Denver Broncos, they haven't done a lot. I do like P.J. Locke. I do like the P.J. Locke re-signing. I hate the Brandon Jones signing. Not a good one, in my opinion. Malcolm Roach. Honestly, probably their best signing, if we're not going to include the re-signing. But, like, man, what they what are they going to do at quarterback? I get, the draft, perhaps? Is that the route they're going to go? Because Russell Wilson's gone. They traded Jerry Judy. They essentially got breadcrumbs for him. I don't like how they've handled free agency thus far. For a team that didn't have a lot in funds, I feel like they haven't used that that little bit of funds well. Not being able to get... I mean, you just traded Jerry Judy for a fifth and a sixth. It's not great. Kind of is what it is. So I'm going to put him in this poor use of funds category. I'm going to move on to... The Tennessee Titans. Their sign-in today was Kenneth Murray, a guy that, uh, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, I get it, they lost uh, Shair, but Kenneth Murray honestly hasn't been that good of a linebacker, I think, in the NFL. Maybe things turn around this year for him. You get, a, I mean, he's a very athletic linebacker, but kind of, to me, it's kind of a whatever move. Uh, still, huge fan of the Cushionberry move. Tony Pollard's fine. Three years, $24 million, I think is honestly solid deal for, uh, for Pollard. Didn't really feel like one they necessarily had to make, but hey, they're trying to get playmakers in there. Uh, they, they have made their offensive line better. I like the uh, Chidobie Awuzie sign-in for a cornerback room that was just not good. So overall, I think the Titans have done a good job thus far in free agency. I'm going to put them... Um, 
Mm, I think I'm I think I'm actually gonna put them right here behind the Packers. All right, we got the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Rumor on the street is the Patriots are trying to sign Calvin Ridley. Uh, they're throwing money at him, but he wants to go back to Jacksonville. I don't know if Jacksonville wants him back because if they resign him, I believe that third that they gave up for him turns into a second. And I'm not going to lie. I think I might rather have the second than Calvin Ridley. If I'm the Jags, maybe, potentially. I don't know. We'll see. They brought in Gabe Davis. Cool. Kind of is what it is. Uh, no real other signings to talk about today with them. I mean, they've, in all honesty, just kind of spent money. I don't think they've made big signings. Like, Gabe Davis could be a big signing, but I don't think it's all that in a bag of chips. Uh-oh, Colts. They're among the teams that have talked to Daniil Hunter. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. But uh, regardless, end of the day, like uh, the Jags, they, they have literally, I think, just spent money. That's it. The, like Mitch Morris, I think, was a good sign-in by them. Really do. Uh, I think. Actually, I think I'm going to keep the commanders ahead of them. Uh, Yeah, like, I don't think they've done anything to really blow my socks off. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know how much of a better team they really are. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe they do bring back uh, Calvin Ridley. Indianapolis Colts. This is a team that has firmly just been re-signing their guys. Michael Pittman, franchise tag, extension. Taquan Lewis, re-sign. Zaire Franklin, re-sign. Grover Cleveland. Oh, Grover Cleveland. Oh, <laughs> he's a president. Grover Stewart, re-sign. Today, re-signing Kenny Moore. I knew he wasn't leaving. He wants to die a Colt. So we're just going to go ahead and put them in this re-signed their players category. Uh, real quick before we get to the next team, if you want to know more about the NFL draft, I know we're talking free agency, but hey, the NFL draft is a part of this offseason process. If you want to know more prospects in this draft, I got good news for you. I got a draft guide. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel houston texans oh man uh, i guess you would say their big move today was trading for joe mixon uh i haven't seen what the trade value was on that i i, I imagine that it didn't cost much uh, terms of the trade have not been reported yet. I imagine it's relatively cheap. So they're bringing Joe Mixon after losing Devin Singletary uh, and maybe essentially losing out on Saquon Barkley. They were rumored to be really in on him, but uh, obviously couldn't get anything done. Uh, and this is a team that's really just spent money on depth. They've, they've got a good players. I love Danico Autry. I, I I like Dalton Schultz. I like Aziz Al Shayer. I mean, he's more of a thumper, but he's a guy familiar with D'Amico Ryan's back in San Fran. Like Keen was a good sign in, re sign in. Like Akuda, you bring him back or you bring him in, a guy that was once formerly first round pick. He wasn't all that bad in Atlanta last season. I mean, no real big superstar signer. We'll see. Maybe they get in on Daniil Hunter. They're one of the teams that talked to him. But like all in all, they've just kind of spent money. I mean, I feel like they are the they are the reason I made the category money was spent. They've spent money. They've got a good, like solid enough players and whatnot, but no one player there was really a big splash move, in my opinion. Moving on to the AFC 
North. Big signing today for the Pittsburgh Steelers was Patrick Queen. Obviously, they brought in Russell Wilson on a one-year, one, $1.7 million deal. So they got him for cheap. But they spent a little bit on Patrick Queen, who had a very good season last year, and they're kind of hoping uh, with him. And much, much, you'll notice this, or you should notice this with rookie linebackers. It starts clicking for them in year three, year four, usually. And then they suddenly become very good linebackers in the league. Typically, that, that's why people, like, that's why I think linebacker is kind of getting pushed down draft boards because typically you don't really know what you'll have until year three or year four by the time where you're probably wanting to figure out if you should work on an extension with this guy or not. Uh, it's just linebacker is such a difficult position to play in the NFL. It's such a cerebral uh, position. It takes time for them to get acclimated to the NFL. But it looks like Patrick Queen has done just that. I mean, he's coming off actually two very good years for the Ravens. So this is a good pickup. The Steelers have been struggling to find uh, a linebacker for years now. So I think it's a good pickup. I think they have uh, they have more money in place to be able to make other moves, and they just haven't. I just I was talking about them last night, where it's like, yo, Steelers, they shedded some cap. They should be able to go and make some moves. I mean, there's a lot of good good players still out there. So don't get me wrong, but uh, for now, I'm gonna put them in money was spent with. Potentially them jump into this overall good moves. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what other moves they end up making. Moving on to the Cleveland Browns, who surprisingly have been able to make moves. They, I believe, clo uh, closed the deal on just uh, Jameis Winston. He's going to come there and be the primary backup for Deshaun Watson. Uh, they brought in, uh, golly, who was it? Uh, Maurice Hurst. They brought back Shelby Harris. I feel like I'm missing it. I feel like they brought in a running back. I feel like they may have brought in, in a running back that I'm thinking. Oh, the commander signed Jeremy Chin. This is why I refresh this while I'm doing these videos. Ooh, suddenly it looks like it's a little bit better than money was spent. I actually really like that move. I really like that move. I might be moving the commanders right here on the spot. As I'm still looking for this running back that I th thought or think the Browns may or may not have signed. They did bring in a uh, Denji, who's a solid depth at tackle, but he's not much more than that. Let's see. Uh, let's show me some more posts. Um... I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Maybe I made this up. I don't know. You could probably let me know in the comments section below. There ain't no way I'm thinking about Derek, Derek Henry. <laughs> That's not the name I'm thinking of. Yeah, you could just let me know in the... Oh, there we go. Naheem Hines. Okay. <laughs> Gives him a return, man. I went through all that trouble just to, just to find Naheem Hines. All in all, man, getting Jerry Judy, like, this is a team that does a good job trading for for wide receivers. Like, Amari, Amari Cooper was a fifth round. Like, they trade him for a fifth round pick. They get Jerry Judy for a fifth and a sixth. Like, good on the Browns, despite having no money. They've been able to bring back some of their guys with Zedary Smith on being, honestly being one of the biggest. I'm going to put them in this category. And we're moving Washington up. I think I'm going to put them right here. Washington, welcome to overall good moves. Like that, I think that chin move means, hey, there's a little bit more than just spending money. Especially if they're like, hey, chin, we're going to put you at one position and we're not going to screw around like the Panthers who said, hey, you can do everything for us on your rookie deal rather than just kind of focusing in on one position and getting really good at that. I like them. I really like that move for the commanders. All right, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, they brought in Mike Kosicki today. So, yay. This is their low-budget free agent tight end this year. Last year it was, what, Irv Smith? Uh, who was it the year before? Was it Austin Hooper? I don't know. Maybe I'm making stuff up, but 
they typically do this every year. They just kind of bring in a low priced free agent at tight end and kind of call it a day. I like the Geno Stone signing. I'm a big fan of Geno Stone, but I'm kind of curious how that safety room is going to work itself out. I think Zach Moss is a good sign in. Like all in all, they kind of like focused on um, bringing back some of their guys like Drew Sample, Cody Ford. They did throw the tag on Higgins, but it looks like he's probably going to be traded. So until that happens, I don't really know what really to do with them. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them right. I'm going to put them right here. Hmm. Nah, I don't think so. I think I'm going to put them right behind the Steelers with in, in this money was spent category. All right, let's keep rolling. As Derrick Henry being the huge sign-in for the Baltimore Ravens. I had the Ravens in uh, the category. What was the category I had them in? Oh, yeah, I had them in the category. this category I called. I mean, what can you do about it? Because this is a team that didn't have a lot of cap space. They, they pri obviously prioritized getting just a matter of bouquet, not just back, but extended. Derrick Henry, though, for me, was a foregone conclusion. The minute we knew he was out of Tennessee, I was like, oh, man, he's going to the Ravens. He feels like such a good fit for the Ravens, and he is a really good fit, I think, for the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm going to put him in this little cap, but good moves category. I think that I think that's right. All right, we're in the AFC East. Let's uh, run through this real quick as... Tyrod Taylor got signed, I think, late last night, along with John Simpson. They brought, brought in Luki, uh, Leaky Foto. He's a depth guy at best. Uh, I do believe they brought in Javon Kinlaw as well, but they're just not, they don't show him. They don't list him here, uh, which I like Kinlaw. He, he's familiar with Robert Sala, so uh, I think he's going to be pretty decent in that rotation, but I'm going to put him. I'm gonna put them right here. Yeah, I'm gonna put them right here in this little cap. But good moves. Honestly, they're making good moves. Okay, we got New England Patriots. Honestly, until they if they could land like a Calvin Ridley, that would be fun. But this is a team that's been very focused on re-signing their own players, Kendrick Bourne. Jalen Rager, Hunter uh, Hunter Henry, we got uh, Michael Wainu, Joshua Uchi, Christian Ellis, yay! They brought in uh, Taki Taki. I think that's a fine sign in two years, six and a half million is actually pretty darn good. Uh, and I mean, I guess Antonio Gibson and Jacoby Brissett are kind of their big signings, so not really that big. So I'm gonna just put them in, resign their own guys. But they got a ton of cap space, man. I'm kind of waiting for them to do something. I'm waiting for them to do something. Oh, my Miami Dolphins. Freaking fins up, fins up. Uh, I'm glad we got Shaq Barrett. That's that's great. He's at this stage in his career where I think he's a really good rotation player. Uh, it looks like I think Jalen Phillips will be back by season's time, like the beginning of the season. Don't, don't really know what the timeline looks like for Bradley Chubb, though. Aaron Brewer was kind of a foregone conclusion. Honestly, he's going to be a really good fit. For the 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 run game, the run scheme we have there, but I think he's just dog water and pass protection. Jordan Smith's a good pickup. I mean, the, listen, the Dolphins didn't have a lot of cap to spend. If you want to hear me talk about the linebackers, you can go to that stream I did yesterday. They didn't have a lot of cap to spend. I think they did good little moves with what they had. So I'm going to put them just a smidge ahead of the San Francisco 49ers. Let's wrap this up with the Buffalo Bills. Their big sign-in was Mitch Trubisky because they were just focused on re-signing their players. But uh-uh, wait a minute there. Nicholas Morrow, does that become their best free agent sign-in? This was a team that they were struggling to get under the cap. They had to rework some things. Josh Allen had to rework his contract. And just so that they could keep some of their guys, they ended up extending Deion Dawkins. It's great. It's good. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in, re-signed their guys. And that's going to, if you want to see what I had to say about those day one sign-ins, you can check out that video down there. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.